Okay. Hi, my name is Matt Parsonage. I work for Clarion Futures, I'm the head of communities. Uh, Clarion Futures is the charitable foundation, part of Clarion Housing Group, which I'll go on to talk about in a while. Uh, firstly, thank you, of course, to um, my hosts for inviting me to uh, share this presentation at the conference. I'm very honoured to be invited and I hope you um, get something out of it. I hope you enjoy it and um, any questions I'm more than happy to answer at the end of it. So I'll just give you a little insight into the kind of work um, I do and my organisation gets involved in. So as I say, um, I'm Head of Communities at Clarion Futures and Clarion Futures is part of Clarion Housing Group and we are the UK's largest housing association. Now I'm aware that not everyone uh, around the world has uh, what is called housing associations. So for anyone that doesn't know what they are, essentially you think of it as a, uh, a not-for-profit uh, kind of public sector body that owns a whole load of properties and homes uh, that people live in that perhaps they can't afford to get a mortgage or buy private housing. So if essentially we are a provider of social housing or public housing as, as it may be called in some countries um, and here in the UK it's increasingly been known as affordable housing. So these are people that are um, outside of the private market uh, and need some help perhaps with social rent housing or some sort of affordable housing. Um, we also do develop houses as well, which I'll come back on to. Um, so Clarion Housing Group is a very big organisation um, uh, and we are um, a housing association essentially, but also got lots of other bits of the business, which, which I'll talk about. Now, it's really important to say that Clarion Housing sees itself as a social business um, and that we believe we're here more more than a social landlord would be just here to provide housing we're also here to provide better life opportunities for people to live in our housing and also to create better communities and neighborhoods where we can where we can have that kind of impact in some kind of local area so we see ourselves very much as a social business uh, and, and providing social good so here's a little quick diagram of clarion housing group and how it's how it's set up so at the top here, you'll see Clarion Housing Group and then underneath all the different parts of the business. Uh, and I've circled in red there, uh, in great red crayon, uh, the Clarion Futures part, which, which is where I work. Uh, if, you go along, if you go along that map though, what you'll see is underneath, um, there are separate entities of the whole group. So going from the left over, the Housing Association is its own entity. Uh, and that's essentially the part of the business that really owns most of the properties that we, uh, we have in our portfolio. Uh, second along, you'll see something called Latima. Well, that's our development arm. We are also a private uh, and social developer of housing, which means that we do build houses. And that is an increasing part of the business. Um, there's a big housing crisis uh, in many countries, obviously, and there definitely is in the UK. Um, there simply is not enough uh, housing around for people at the moment. And uh, we're trying to do a bit in building more homes. Uh, we're aiming to build something like uh, two to 3,000 homes every year for the next few years. Then we have Clarion Futures. And then along from there are three other parts of the business. Clarion Response is our in-house uh, team who do all the repairs and maintenance on our properties. And that was all brought in-house a couple of years ago. And then we have a commercial property management company and also something called House Exchange, which helps people to move houses um, if they want to perhaps move from one area to another. And maybe they might want to downsize to a smaller house or even to upsize, um, trying to find people in mutually um, beneficial situations that they can swap houses. That's a map of, uh, of the UK you can see there. Now Clarion's only got properties in England, so we're not UK wide, it's just England. And as you can see from that heat map, we are largely concentrated around London and the Southeast but we do have properties all around England, uh, including all the main northern towns, and we do go right down to the southwest. Now it's 135,000 properties, so that equals about 350,000 people live in a Clarion property. So as you can see, that is a lot of properties. It's a lot of properties to look after. It's a lot of people to try and help through um, in terms of their life opportunities. And it's a lot of communities and neighborhoods that essentially we are the main player in those neighborhoods. So it's a big remit that Clarion has. Uh, a lot of people, particularly if you went around London, as you can see a separate London map there, a lot of people in London live in Clarion properties. Um, and that's important to us because they'll live right across the country in areas where there's a lack of affordable housing. 
and Clarion is probably the biggest social landlord in a number of those neighbourhoods. So it's an important role for us to play there. So Clarion Futures, who are we? Well, as I said earlier on, we are the charitable arm of Clarion Housing Group. Now we're not there to look after the properties particularly or to do anything with the buildings. We're more about the people and about the communities in which they live. So Clarion Housing Group has at the moment two main really big priorities. One is about building more homes, which is where you saw Latimer. And secondly, is about investing in our communities and in the people that live in our homes. And that's Clarion Futures. So Clarion Housing Group has invested more than any other housing association in this kind of work that I'm describing to you now. They've made a big commitment to invest 150 million pounds over 10 years to do the kind of support that we are offering around skills and opportunities. And that's to those 350,000 people I mentioned in the previous slide. So we're roughly spending about 15 million pounds a year on projects and partnerships, not to do with homes, but actually to do with the people and the communities in which they live. Now, a lot of those people do need a lot of work, which I'll come on to because they do need help around money. They need help about getting into work. They need help in terms of how to make their life opportunities a lot better. And that's where Clarion Futures comes in. So in terms of what we concentrate on, it's a big program, but it's important that we do try and prioritize our resources um, because although 150 million pounds over 10 years could seem like a lot of money, actually when you split it up year by year, it could disappear quite quickly, particularly if you think about the need of those residents and communities. So our main strategic programs are around supporting residents into work and training. So that's really getting people into work, getting, helping people get jobs, and not just into any job, into a job that um, will bring in a good salary for them, it'll look after their family, and also give them a chance maybe for some kind of career path. So that's really all about getting people into jobs. Second, it's about helping people with their finances, and it's also helping people understand how to make best use of digital technology. So how to get online, and when you're online, how to make the most of it. Many of us will take it for granted around trying to get the best deal online, or maybe we do our banking online. But a lot of our residents won't do that. They won't be online perhaps, and if they are, they won't understand how to get the best deal and save themselves money, which obviously is important if you haven't got a lot of money in the first place. Now my team is the communities team, and we talk about building stronger communities and supporting what we call placemaking in the UK. So that's really <clears throat> best described in a way as where we might have a lot of housing in one area. For instance, uh, there's an area in London called Merton, another called Bromley, where we have thousands and thousands of homes and essentially we have big housing estates. So my job, my team's job is to try and work with those community groups and the people that live in those areas to try and help them help themselves make that community a better one to live in. So that might be helping refurbish or build a new community centre. It might be providing funding for after school activities. It might be for providing holiday activities or projects and partnerships which will help combat social isolation and loneliness, which is increasingly an issue, particularly amongst older people within our community. And obviously at the moment with a global pandemic and various lockdowns going on, much more important than it was. Fourthly, we have a strategic support team and they're more and more getting involved with the kind of work we're doing and they're trying to help lever and harness the possibilities that we have with our big contracts. If you think about how much we're doing with development contracts, actually building thousands of homes, those construction companies all have to make pledges and commitments around what we call social value. What extra are they going to supply as well as supplying the houses? Will they provide apprenticeships? Will they provide employment opportunities to local people? Can they support the school in an area where they're building houses? And then we also have a fundraising element because although we provide 10 million pounds a year roughly, we do top that up to around 15 million pounds a year through external fundraising. And in the UK, that will largely mean through things like uh, what was European funding or now central government funding, or it may well be things around national lottery funding or communities and trusts or philanthropic opportunities in terms of trying to get donations. So here are some of the ambitions that we look at and so there's some numbers in there in terms of what we've been looking at over the last couple of years. We're really here to try and provide people 
with the tools and support they need to help themselves. This is not about us doing something to people. It's about trying to give a helping hand to people. And to do that, we need to understand what their needs are. And I will come on to that in a later slide. Some headline numbers there. We're looking to support 4,000 people a year into work. To provide 250 apprenticeship opportunities. We're trying to reach around 15,000 young people and provide them opportunities. We're also trying to help 3,000 residents at least in terms of budgeting and money advice. And when we add up all the social impact from contractors, from what we're doing, from what our partners are doing, we calculate that that will be worth around one billion pounds over the next decade. So it's a big program and it can get quite complex, but we do get some good results. We have a program every year, which probably has 100 to 150 projects and partnerships within it. Some of them can be quite small, some of them very large. What I've tried to do here is just pick out three headline programs that we're working on at the moment. The first one I'll talk about is Love London Working because this is our headline employment program. Now this was a, a European Union funded program and clearly, uh, as I referred to in a while, we are uh, leaving the European Union at the moment. So this is gonna be the last big funding program from Europe, but we are looking to take it forward post EU funding. And we are talking to the British central government now around how that might work. Love London Working is a seven year program with big targets around getting 8,000 people into work and reaching 28,000 people overall. We've brought together 18 other housing associations. So Claren is leading this partnership and delivering part of it, but we are basically the umbrella body for 18 other housing associations. And it's worth about 34 million pounds as a program. And that's EU funding, as I said. We're working with over 100 employers. Some of you will have heard of like pret and Primark, but also a lot of people with our supply chain from um, construction companies. The important thing about Love London working for Clarion was it was the first big partnership that we led on. And that's given us real confidence and the sector in terms of public housing, it's given confidence that Clarion can deliver on this kind of agenda. And we are now working with central government closely to talk about other similar employment programs that are coming out from central government as a result of Brexit, but also as a result of trying to stimulate the economy um, post pandemic. The second thing I'll just quickly refer to is the Community Impact Partnership. Now that's a different type of resource for us, a different type of program. It's a social investment fund. And we brought together four housing association partners with a war chest of three million pounds. So that's all really about trying to get loans out to social enterprises to help them build their business. But these are social enterprises that work within our neighborhoods, within our areas that will provide services, but also offer employment or volunteering opportunities for the residents that live in those areas. So we're looking to try and essentially invest in business in our areas. And the third one is for my team, and that's the Housing Association Youth Network Volunteering Academy. We're working with a program called I Will, which is all about young people volunteering and getting into social action. It's a four year program with three tiers. and The program cost is around now about three, three and a half million pounds. Some of that is from the I Will campaign itself, some is from the National Lottery. Now we're leading on that, and that means that we've now got about 30 to 40 smaller local projects going on across the country, helping people that live in social housing areas, helping those young people to get opportunities they really wouldn't normally do. They come together as a group, and they identify what needs to be done in the neighborhood, They'll call that a social action project and they'll work towards doing that as a collective. At the same time, individually, they'll get opportunities for volunteering, employment and training and also just fun to see that they can actually give something back to their communities. We're very proud of that program. Just a little bit on what the strategic team do then, because I just mentioned it earlier. We do a lot of grant giving now. So what we decided to do is with some of the money we do, we don't look to commission partners to deliver something we'll simply offer grants. So we'll have grant rounds about specific themes. At the moment, we've got an emergency support fund on offer for community groups and local partners that have really struggled during the pandemic, particularly during our lockdowns in the UK. So that's about getting small amounts of money, maybe three, four, five thousand pounds out to projects and groups that are really struggling. And maybe their funding has been cut off from elsewhere. Social value, I mentioned, trying to get the most out of working with their contractors. Volunteering is around trying to help set up a corporate volunteering scheme where Clarion Housing Group and our partners 
can maybe offer staff resource to voluntary sector partners. So perhaps three, four, five days a year, staff from Clarion or a construction company can help other voluntary sector organizations with something that is their expertise. Now that might be finance, it might be HR, they might be good at doing business plans, it might be something to do with information technology. But the idea is we're adding extra value there. We have a corporate charity, St Mungo's, who work with homeless people. We have a William Sutton Prize, which is around trying to encourage innovation in housing. And we also offer a central support team, which is to really try and understand how the rest of our business can help Clarion Futures deliver on our objectives. Now, I mentioned here about a lot about residents, so I'm just going to give you two slides as an insight into how we know what our residents need. We've developed a, a programme called the Clarion Index. This is the title from 2019. We've just got the 2020 results in. And this will help us understand from surveying our residents, what actually, what is the situation they find themselves in? We can make assumptions about that, but until we sample a good amount of our residents, thousands of them, and ask them the same questions every year, we won't really know, we won't really have the evidence to go on, then we, then we can make our interventions. So some headlines here from the 29 clear Clarion Index. If we look at unemployment, yeah, at the time of the index it was around about 3.9% nationally, or well, 13% of our residents are employed. So obviously you can see that a lot more of our residents are unemployed compared to the national average. Almost a fifth, well over a fifth of 18 to 24 year olds have gone without food. And 17% have used what's called a food bank in the UK where they get food free. So that obviously shows that some people are living in very challenging circumstances. 21% have gone without heating in the last year. Again, that would be because they can't afford it. 59% of residents are unable to save a little bit of money each month. Now, again, it helps us understand how that compares nationally. I haven't included those figures in all of these, but that will be very, very much over and compared to how much people in full paid employment and live in private housing would compare, as would all of these. 42%, almost half are worried about money. So obviously there's a big mental well-being issue going on here. And 10% feel lonely often or always. Now that compares to 6% normally in the UK. And 44% take no regular exercise. This was a bit of a surprise for us in the last Clarion Index because that figure has gone up. So we now have to think about whether we should put in place something around health and well-being and really trying to enhance opportunities for people to get to take part in more exercise and be healthier. And secondly, in terms of understanding, we have something called community insight. Now that is a separate piece of software which we can use with GIS mapping to look at particular neighbourhoods and understand what the national picture is, not with our residents, but how it compares nationally. And so this is just one slide taken from Community Insight and this will tell us about an area, could be somewhere like Burnley, could be somewhere like Bromley in South London. And this will tell you typically what goes on there in terms of the type of jobs people will have in that borough, how many people access it, and what sort of the growing industries? And we can do that for every single neighbourhood right across the country. And that gives us an idea of what's happening right across England. And moving towards the end of the presentation, I'll just move on to a couple of things around challenges and around opportunities. Now, obviously, we're right in the middle still, or hopefully towards the end of a global coronavirus pandemic. And it's been interesting learning how we've all worked. I mean, for starters, most of the team, nearly 90% of the organisation, has quickly gone to working from home full time. And obviously that has issues, but it's generally worked relatively well. And in Clarion Futures, we established an emergency support fund very quickly to try and get some money out quickly with uh, not too much effort for community groups and voluntary sector partners to try and get access to funding to help their services keep going. Or maybe to bolster them as some of their services around food distribution, or combating social isolation. And at the moment, we're working this into a bigger, longer term recovery and resilience program to help people recover from the things they've been through. Jobs and training service have managed to carry on with high levels of engagement, switching to phone-based service instead of face-to-face. -face. And with as an organization, we've made over 20,000 calls to the more vulnerable residents to check on their well-being, see if they're okay, and just to see if they have any additional needs. Now, secondly, in the UK, you may well have noticed we have something else coming on the horizon, and that's Brexit. And we've also probably going to have some kind of post-COVID recession. So we've got some quite scary things on the horizon economically. And that means that we really have to think about who's going to be at the hardest here. And it normally is the people that live in social housing. 
So many of our employment partners uh, do recruit currently from, from our residents, but a lot of those are in retail, hospitality, security, and so on. And they, of course, are the sectors that have been hardest hit during the recession from COVID, and also probably will be hardest hit through Brexit. So we have to think about what we do about that. And a third one that's really been put back slightly, uh, but will come back, obviously, is around climate change. How does a large housing association respond to the emerging climate crisis? And are, is the housing sector in general in the UK a bit behind the curve on this? And could we do some more thinking around it? Almost certainly so. <clears throat> and the opportunities on the back of those challenges? Well, I think we've learned that we can quickly adapt our service offer, maybe more than we would have thought pre-pandemic. We have to think about how we maybe turn services more digital, if possible, and also think how to get to that real micro level of neighbourhoods. We've had lots of mutual aid networks set up locally, just from people just coming together. How do we sort of harness that? That's a real flowering there of local volunteering. How do we make the most of that? And how do we help this recovery and resilience programme really reach the parts we need to? Back to the Brexit and the post-COVID recession, some job markets will be badly hit. Certainly things around leisure and retail have been hit, but maybe there's an opportunity now to do things slightly more differently, perhaps more locally, but also many, in many ways, we need to think about different kind of industry sectors. How can we get into renewable energies? What do we do about 5G? Can we match our residents to those kind of job opportunities? And thirdly, innovation. We're definitely thinking about working in slightly different ways. We've set up a series of innovation labs at local levels to try and work with local people to, to help them identify their own challenges and their own responses. And as part of that, we've set up a virtual learning series where we're bringing in experts from right across many sectors, including Oxford University, Ipsos Murray Surveying, and companies called like In Common, who can help us with new thinking and really maybe challenge the way we've been thinking so far. And the last thing I would say there is learning to make the most of the data we have available. Because the Clarion Index and Community Sites are great, but do we use them enough? And does the housing sector in general use those enough? So I'll end there. I hope you've enjoyed that presentation on Clarion Futures and Clarion Housing Group. And I hope it's made some sense. And I'm more than willing to have conversations with anyone out there that wants to talk more about this. And I'm really interested in learning about other people and partners too. Thank you.